Hey guys and welcome to a new video here on Photoshop. My name is Joseph. In today's video, I'm going to show you how you can add clouds into your existing sky. So what happened was I did this image for a client and I was ready to ship it off to her. And I was looking at the image for a while and I noticed that it was really lacking something. I couldn't tell exactly what it was, but I just knew it was an okay image. I could send it and she'll be happy with it. But I thought the clouds are plain. So why don't I find clouds to put in to make it a little bit more interesting or add some form of depth to the image. And that's what we're going to do today. So I went on Google and I just searched for clouds in blue sky. And and there were so many that came up but none of them were really what i wanted to use for the image because the blues have to match the direction of the clouds have to match the perspective has to be okay as well and those are the few things i want to point out when we go back in photoshop but for now i just want to show you that i got an image here on google and i'm just going to right click this one copy image and then go back to photoshop and then paste the cloud inside photoshop so as soon as i put it inside photoshop as you can see it's really really small so the next thing you have to do is make sure you're expanding it to cover the area that you want so i'm going to hit command t on my keyboard and that's going to bring Bring the control or the free transform tools around the image and what you can do is just pull the handle so in the corner right here I can just pull it to drag it up towards the right to make it bigger and do the same thing to the left corner and then just make it fill the entire frame so as you can see you can't see the subject right now but you can see that we've been able to increase the size of the clouds and it's covering the entire area that we are looking at as well so what we need to do is now tell Photoshop that I don't want the cloud to cover the subject I also don't want it to hide the subject completely like it is now I want the subject to show through and I just want to limit the appearance of these clouds we've brought in to the existing sky. So I'm just going to hit the layer mask icon tool down here to add the layer mask. Even though it's added and nothing has changed as you can see because the layer mask is set to white anything that is on that layer is going to show through. So now we can use black to hide the layer um, or whatever it is on that layer from showing through and I'm going to show you a quick way to get started. So the first thing I'm going to do is hit G for my gradient map tool. So the way this works is you can set your foreground and background to a color and then use a linear gradient map and then just drag it on the layer so for example if i just quickly use my black foreground and a white background but with the option set here i'm using foreground to transparent as you can see here so it means that whatever i see in my foreground is going to be the dominant color and it's going to fade into nothing so it's fading into nothing means it's fading into white basically which is going to show the clouds through let me just demonstrate that for you to see so if i just press ok right now and then you can see over here that it's black to transparent so when i click and drag up because your starting point is going to be your foreground so it's going to start with black and then fade into transparent now when i let it go you can see it's gradually fading out the clouds and this is exactly what we want but it's, it's still not the best right we need to be able to see the subject completely and we also need to make sure that the clouds are not covering the trees that's another thing so what i'm going to do right now is just zoom in a little bit and then start my gradient map again so you can run these several times and it's going to keep adding as you keep dragging so i'm going to start from somewhere here and then drag it upwards a little bit like that and you can see now we've been able to get rid of the clouds covering the trees and right now this is looking decent it's okay we're getting to a point where we can move on so what i'm going to do now is because i'm going to add several other adjustments i need to create a group first of all and then name a cloud so that everything concerning the clouds is going to be in that group the way you can do that is just hit command g and and that is going to create a group now there's nothing in the group except the cloud so if i hide the group you can see that the clouds are gone but if i make the group visible now the clouds are back so i can easily rename this to cloud so i know that everything in there contains the clouds now that we've renamed this to clouds, one advantage of having a group also is that you can put another layer mask on a group. And what it's going to do is control everything that is inside of the group. So you don't need to have special adjustment layers for each layer inside the group. Once you put the master layer mask on the group, it's going to affect everything that is inside of the group. Okay, so now I just need to carefully paint out the subject using the group layer mask so again i'm going to just press the layer mask icon and that's going to add a white layer mask onto the group and so nothing has changed everything stays the same but with my brush when i set it to black foreground i can now paint and you can see that it's beginning to reveal the subject in the areas that we want all right so i'm just going to quickly paint with black on this layer mask the layer mask on the entire group and gradually reveal where our subject or our model is so just painting taking my time to paint is revealing like everywhere that i want to make visible so i need to paint the clouds out of her hair as well and that's what i'm doing i don't really care if i go out of the lines right now i can always go back to fix it and that's an advantage of using layer mask you can always go back and paint in or paint out because they're very non-destructive way of editing and i'd always 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 recommend that you're using layer masks in situations that you can because it's going to save you 
in the future okay so now i know i overpainted in some areas so for example where her hair is you can see there's a halo there and that's because i have painted out of frame so i'm just going to reverse my foreground to white and now when i start painting it's going to bring the clouds back now i'm going to use a very soft brush okay so that the edges are not really harsh and one thing is when you're hiding things in photoshop when you have a very soft edge brush it makes things look more believable because they are blending into each other if you have a very hard edged brush people can tell where the strokes are but when it's soft it just blends in nicely and leaves no trace so that's one trick that you can also put in mind anytime you're using a mask try as much as possible to use soft edged brushes because the edges are not defined and it helps hide some of um, your brush strokes so i'm still painting just around here I'm not being too careful because I just want you guys to grasp the technique and then you can take your time when you're doing it. But right now, I just want to show you um, just how to put clouds in your images. Okay, now we are not set, but this clearly is almost like 50% of the job done. I think I also overpainted here. So let me just go back and then paint it back in like that. All right, I think this looks good. Now our next step is to fix the colors. You can see that the sky is too blue. This is too saturated. So what we need to do is just pull down the saturation and just make minor adjustments to make sure that the colors match. So the next thing I want to draw your attention to is the way I selected the clouds. Now I am just going to temporarily hide the layer mask of the cloud and it's going to reveal like the areas that I hid and it's going to help me explain this a little bit better. So looking at the model and looking at the sky that we have, right? You can see that. Let me quickly just create a blank layer and do a demo for you guys to see. So I'm going to paint with red so you can see it properly. Now if you look at the subject, you can tell that the light is coming down this way towards it and that's why we have the shadow here. So you have a light pattern, then you have a shadow and if you look at other parts of here again, so for example this area right here, you can see you have a light source and then you have a shadow. If you look at your knees you have a light source then you have a shadow so that's the same thing that i was looking at in the clouds we have a light source and then we have a shadow then we have a light source and then we have a shadow so it means that the sun was coming from the generally let's say the same direction so it's okay to use it i can't insert a cloud that has a different lighting pattern from my lighting situation in the frame so always pay attention to the lighting source in your clouds when you're doing something like that just so it looks more believable and it looks more realistic so i'm going to delete this temp and i'm going to review view the layer mask so we are back to where we started now one thing that people too tend to do is once they've put in the clouds they think that is it but then you also need to know that clouds are far away and if you're shooting at let's say f16 f22 or f30 something then maybe you can have clouds a little bit in focus or if you're focusing on the clouds itself then you can have them in focus but right now it's very far away because even if the trees are out of focus your clouds can never be in focus so that's something you need to bear in mind and pay attention to so i'm going to look at the clouds right now and determine um, the amount of blur to add to it to make it seem like it's really far away and it was captured in the scene so come down to Gaussian blur so filter blur and then choose Gaussian blur and now we're going to determine the radius to use so if I go all the way to the right that's 670 for example this is going to be too much of a blur it's unrealistic we're back to where we started but we want to just add a little bit of a blur to make it look believable so I'm looking at the trees and I'm zooming in a little bit because I have the preview checked so if I uncheck it it's going to show me how the clouds look like currently and when I add a blur it's going to show me how the blur also looks like and I think this looks decent but I just want to blur it a little bit more so maybe like 6.6 yeah this pretty much matches the blur in the background so I think we can settle for this so I'm gonna hit ok and it's going to apply the blur to the clouds and so now we're having a little bit more of a believable or realistic clouds in our sky but we're still not done now we need to work on the color of the sky so what I'm gonna do is create a hue saturation adjustment layer and I'm gonna clip it down onto the clouds layer Okay, so that all the adjustments I'm going to do are going to be present on the clouds layer alone. If I hide the clouds layer, you can see that even though the sky is a bit blue, it has a bit of a magenta tint in there. So, or like a red tint, it's not like a pure blue. So if I want to adjust the blues in the current sky that we have, it means I have to add a little bit more red. And moving the hue to the left is going to add a bit more red and it's going to go in the direction that we're looking at. So as you can see, we've been able to shift the hue alone from what it is currently 
so if i hide that you can see it's looking really deep and saturated and then i've been able to shift it to a blue that looks a little bit more believable the next thing i'm also going to do is just bring the saturation down because this is way too saturated so i'm going to bring it down all the way to about this point and as you can see we've gone back to a hue that is really really similar to the clouds or the hue that is existing okay now one thing i'm also noticing is when i'm doing the before and after i can see that the clouds are still a little bit over the trees so i just want to get rid of that so i'm going to go on to the layer mask on our group the clouds group and i'm going to hit b for my brush tool and then i'm just going to quickly paint with black and paint over the trees to get the sky off the trees so just painting a tiny bit over the trees and hiding the clouds from there all right another thing i feel i want to do is the clouds look too prominent in the frame so i want to just bring the opacity down a tiny bit so i'm just going to gradually bring it down let's say to about 60 percent yeah somewhere like this looks great and let me just do a quick before and after before and after yeah i think this looks believable i really like where it is right now and before i end i just want to go over like a few steps the first thing you need to pay attention to is the direction of your light source so you can see in your frame where your light source is look at your shadow pattern look at the clouds and make sure that they are really really similar or very identical so it looks believable when you add clouds to your image the next thing also is to match the hue and opacity and the last thing is to add a little bit of a blur just so it looks believable so these are the few things i wanted to draw your attention to when you're adding clouds to your sky and if you enjoyed this video leave a like leave a comment tell me what you think about it if you're gonna add or implement these into your images do let me know especially shooting in africa if it's not during the rainy season we don't have a lot of beautiful cloudy skies you always get these dry plain blue sometimes gray skies and this is a trick that i think is really going to benefit you if you're in situations like that so do let me know what you think about it like i said in the comments down below leave a like if you enjoyed it and i'll see you guys in the next video peace